wherever you are joining us around the world. And for those celebrating Eid Mubarak to all of those celebrating, welcome to Morecambe here in Lancashire. Welcome to the Mazuma Stadium. And of course, this is the home of the mighty Morecambe FC and the hometown of the mighty Gypsy King sat there, the WBC and lineal world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. We are now just under 40 days away from the biggest fight of Tyson Fury's career so far, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. On May 18th, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as part of Riyadh calendar, there is an iconic, unforgettable event taking place in the iconic capital city. The unified world heavyweight champion, Oleksandr Rusik, puts his WBA, WBO and IBF heavyweight titles on the line against this man here, the WBC and long-reigning lineal heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. The two will finally collide in a ring of fire. Well, joining us here today are uh, some key, key players in that event who are, who are making this happen. Some of them are, are the movers and shakers. Some of them will be doing the fighting, of course. I'm delighted to be joined by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions. We have perhaps the hardest working manager in all of boxing right now, Spencer Brown of Gold Star, and perhaps the sweetest man in boxing in uh, Sugar Hill at the end of the table as well, all with the champion. Now we're gonna hear from everyone up here very, very shortly, but of course, before that, we need to say thank you to those in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia who are making these incredible events right now possible. So firstly, let's say thank you to the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And of course, let's say thank you to the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, his Excellency, Turkey Al al -Sheikh. Okay, well, let's, let's get going. Tyson, I, I just want to start with you. You are the reason that we are here. We are now, as I mentioned, under 40 days away from the fight, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. You look in great shape. Is it all systems going? Before I start, I just want to say a massive shout out to Turkey Al Sheikh and all of everyone who's working in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Eid Mubarak to all you guys and have a fantastic, uh, fantastic day. Um, and the answer to your question is, yeah, I'm training hard, obviously. Um, I'm in fantastic shape, obviously. And I've got a massive fight going up, obviously. So I think there's, there's no room for error. There's no room for not training right or any problems, so we're just going to get through it and 40 days out and feeling fantastic and I know all boxers say the same, oh shit, like I've had a fantastic training camp, yada yada yada, but I actually am having a fantastic training camp and got a good team around me and everything's going to plan, um, no complaints, working very hard, um, got my dad in camp this time, so I've got my secret weapon over there as well. Um, I've got Ty Mitchell in, I've got all the boys, all the girls are in camp, so we've got a full, full, uh, full circus uh, camp, um, so yeah, can't, can't do any more really. It, it was heartbreak when the fight was postponed initially, how long did it take you to, to get over that and, and get going again? At first I was a little bit depressed for the first day or so, but afterwards, like all things in life, um, I realised God's timing is impeccable, perfect, it's not late, it's not early, but it's bang on time. So it wasn't my time to fight for the championship then, but it is going to be my time on May the 18th, so um, I'm really preparing fantastic for it. Well, let's bring in Frank, uh, Frank Warren. A historic moment on May 18th in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is going to be quite the event, and uh, this man looks ready to go here. He does, and uh, I want to echo as well. And thanks to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, uh, His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh, his, uh, and all the team who made this happen. And all the team here at the table who've made it happen. Um, it will happen on the 18th. We've got the biggest fight of the 21st century taking place. It's never happened before, four belts on the line. Um, and we're gonna find out who the best heavyweight in the world is. I've got my views, and I know my views are gonna be right, but it's gonna be something special, something extra, extra special. And these things come along, you know, once, or well, certainly in this case, on this occasion, once in a century up to this year. So, a special fight, two special undefeated fighters, 
two undefeated fighters, and uh, the world is going to see who is the best. I'm the best. I'm just defending my bestness against him. Lineal champion and WBC champion fighting for the other three belts. And, uh, and you know what, Frank? Yeah, I read a lot of comments, people saying, "Oh, there's four belts." Let's just get this one clear right now. There's a lot more than four belts on the line. You got IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, and Lineal. So for all you motherfuckers out there, thought it was four. Correction, it's seven. There's seven things on the line here in this historic event. You're wrong. No, I'm not. It's eight. Oh, the Riyadh season belt. Yeah, you've corrected. I stand corrected. I was one. Eight. Right. So it's eight belts in one fight. That's got to be a record. Yeah, it has, without a doubt. For sure. You have to get another cabinet. You know, one after for sure. Let's bring in Spencer Brown. You've uh, you've been all, all around the country with Tyson Fury in terms of the tours that you used to do, the speaking tours, and now you're his manager as well. This next stage of his career. What are you seeing from this man heading into this fight? I'm seeing a man who's uh, on a mission. He's, he's never looked so good in the last couple of years. And what I'm hearing from the camp, I'm not there every day to watch everything and see everything, but everybody's telling me he's in fantastic shape, great order. You know, he's brought his dad in, and it's very important to have your family around him. I think he'll agree with that. Um, the sugar, very good buzz about the camp, which is fantastic. Well, let's ask Sugar Hill on this. I mean, you are with Tyson Fury all the time now as well. Since the cut, how, how have things been? Have you had to kind of calm down a bit on, on the sparring? Like, how does it work? Do you, do you readdress everything? Uh, for me, um, it's just watching him day to day. He hasn't really let down since the end of the last training camp before the cut. And uh, I guess pretty much, for me, one of the hardest things is watching out for... Uh, these kind of camps when the fighter is totally ready uh, to go and just kind of pacing him to keep him ready and not overdoing it. So um, it's not that difficult, but you just have to watch. You just have to watch the fighter. The fighter will tell you everything if you watch him. And how does he compare at this point to what he did leading up to the Francis Ngannou fight? Uh, you know what? I believe the Francis Ngannou fight was just um, him having so much time off and uh, not being mentally like focused as he is for this one here. Um, you know, he was still ready for the fight. It's just a different mentality when you go in there with uh, at this level for everything, something that he's been waiting for for so long. Um, you know, you, 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 I don't want to say you dream of these things, but these are the things that actually can drive you to be a better person and to bring out your best. Uh, Spencer, and this is a question for everyone really, were you surprised with some of the comments that came from the USIC camp? I think Alex Krasik was actually advising you, Tyson, to, to retire as well. Did this cause surprise? Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Because he's, he's, they've got a mountain to climb to get through and a mountain to, to chip away at. And it's not going to be easy for them at all. They've played the game. They've, you know, we've had a few comments from them in the past. Um, Tyson very quickly and very swiftly dealt with that and I think when he cut his eye we dealt with it very well very quickly we all spoke and, and, and got the date got the date done so there was there was nothing too much to moan about but um, yeah he's got to go through a mountain uh, Usyk and I wouldn't like to face this mountain that's for sure well Tyson what, at the launch press conference where you faced off with Alexander Usyk he didn't say a lot at that press conference. Do you think that's him holding back or he doesn't want to get involved? What is it? He doesn't speak English for one, so he speaks a little bit of English, but it's very difficult to speak to a encyclopedia in boxing who speaks fluent English when you speak broken English. So I don't think you're ever going to get, you get a foreigner same up here with me. You get any American, any British fighter I've ever fought in, nearly 20 years of boxing, no one has ever competed with me on speaking. So especially not some foreign man who speaks broken English. Um, as for all the stuff people's their camp said and all that, you know, this is show business, this is entertainment, this is everything. So if they don't talk about what's going on, then people lose interest and yada yada yada. So they've got to talk shit. It's a must. If you don't talk smack in this game, you ain't going to make it. There's a heavyweight in here, yeah, he's on his rise. 
And my advice to him is, talk tons of smack the whole way. That's how people notice you. And then, when they notice you, then you can show them your skills and do what you got to do. And that's how it's done. And as for like all of the Usex team, they're all lovely, decent people, I think. I saw his manager at, uh, over in Saudi recently. I was just having a bit of fun with him. And, but I shook his hand and uh, he's a nice fella, you know. He's doing the best he can for his man. Um, which, you know, Frank, Spencer, all my team are doing the best they can for their man. So, and if you don't do the best for your man, then you're a pretty shit manager or promoter. That's what I'd say. Um, but as for, like, I've seen some stuff in the media that this is really personal between me and Alexander Rusek. This is not, it's not personal. It's strictly business for both fighters, you know. Um, there's a lot, lot of stuff on the line and all that, but I don't hate him. He don't hate me. He's, he's, a, he's a good good husband, good God-fearing man, so I respect him as a man, as a fighter. He's undisputed um, cruiserweight champion. He's unified heavyweight champion, so anyone would have to respect the man's achievements. Um, good fighter, you know. I've got a, a tough challenge in front of me. But I, I'm very confident in my ability and I'm very confident that I'll beat the guy. But that's not to say he's shit just because he loses to me. Like, you know, everybody I ever beat before, even long reigning lineal champions like Vladimir Klitschko, after I beat him, everyone said, oh, he's a piece of shit in. Clip a while. They're all of these guys who I ever beat, they were all shit after I beat them. So please don't say that Alexander Rusek's shit after I beat him because he's not. He's a, he's a unified heavyweight champion, an undisputed cruiserweight champion. But my personal opinion is of it is. We have right weight divisions for a reason, and me being an encyclopedia on boxing, and I've studied every heavyweight cruiserweight that's ever lived. Um, when the cruiserweights step up to the big boys, usually they get found wanting. And even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived, Evander Holyfield, when he stepped up to the big boys and beat Daddy Bowen and Alex Lewis, he was found wanting. You can you can beat the average big ones, but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters, and we have weight divisions for a reason. And he's going to be found wanting when he fights me on May the 18th. Um, even if you look at David Hay, he was an explosive, uh, good cruiserweight and good heavyweight. And when he fought average heavyweights, he could beat them. But when he stepped up to the big boy in Klitschko, it wasn't really a contest. We look at Thomas Abermack, he was a good light heavyweight, good cruiserweight. He beat some good average heavyweights, good world contender heavyweights, stepped up to the big boys, beat. So I expect the same from um, Alexander, to be fair. Who was the other one? Um, Sultan Ibrahimov. He was Olympic silver medalist. He was 20 and 0. He, he was world. Uh, I think he beat Rams. Shannon Briggs for the world championship. And um, he, he was found wanting against Vladimir Klitschko at Madison Square Garden. So yeah. I could just keep going on and on and on and on. Let's use Johnny Nelson for instance. Johnny was very. He was an undefeated cruiserweight when he was cruiserweight. But every time he stepped up heavyweight, he got bashed. So there is. It's facts. It's like facts. I'm not. I'm not slagging anybody off. But what I'm saying is, these are facts, and if anybody wants to go check my boxing history, go do it. I've studied this game all my life, and you cannot prove it wrong. This is my time, my destiny, my era, and my generation. Facts. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of tactics. Let's bring in Sugar Hill here. Sugar, from, from your perspective, the other heavyweights who have tried to beat Alexander Usyk, Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora, Chaz Witherspoon, all of these guys... Limited ability. But what did they do limited. wrong? Limited. What did they limited do wrong? Limited ability. They tried the best with their own ability, but it's very limited and trouble will take over. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really much for me to say with Tyson, uh, you know, knowing it all. So, uh, no, but just listen. Alexander Usyk, like Tyson said, is a great champion. Cruiserweight, he's won all these fights in his life. Um, and a lot of it is due to you know his athleticism and things of that nature, but he can think. So he's, out, he's able to outthink these guys. Whereas they may come in and think one or two things, he's thinking three and four. So, uh, and you know, Tyson is the same way. Tyson's thinking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of those chess matches, but I definitely agree with Tyson. He's the bigger man, um, the bigger skilled man, and you have a smaller man with those same skills, or um, yeah, we just say with the same skills, <laughs> and uh, that that big man, that big man's gonna win all day, you know. Yeah. And and also, everybody underestimates Tyson's punching power, 
Everybody, I don't understand why. I, mean, I don't know about everybody. While they don't, does well, it? Don't. <laughs> no, you talk about a lot of people, they just don't seem to understand it. I mean, and you're right, everybody who does get stepped in the ring, they find out about it. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's going to be another telling point in this fight. A big telling point for him. I've got a fun fact. Everybody who was supposed to be a non-puncher in my career has given me trouble. And everybody who was supposed to be a dynamite puncher have been all right against. So I better fucking watch me boots, hang her here. Because he's noted as a total non-puncher, but I've been put over by a few non-punchers, Dad, haven't I? Noted non-punchers have put me over before, but the big ones, the big punchers in history, I've, I've been found wanting to keep me nailed down. So that's a little bit of a fun fact for everybody. Man as well. he's definitely got that's, a fact. that's a fact. That's a fact. And he's, he's, he's definitely a tough man, isn't he? Big puncher, weak jaw. Don't take it as well. Yeah. You know what? Big John's suggesting that Usyk has potentially a weak jaw. Uh, Frank? No. 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 He's got cast iron jaw. You yeah. know, but if he's a big puncher. Look, Nigel Ben, yeah. weak round the dash, oil and biggins. There's the other one. He, uh, there's been loads of them. There's been loads of them. And I, I, I put that to, they're putting that much effort into knocking someone out. Leave the self open to a counter. Crack. When a man who don't punch as much is, is using his boxing and moving, and he's not leaving himself wide open to get knocked out. Frank, you've talked about an Achilles heel for Alexander Rusik as well. Do you want to tell us more about that? I've, I mean, I've, looked at, uh, I've sort of looked at a lot of his fights going back to the amateur days, and he is a bit of a crybaby when it comes to getting caught to the body. He cries to the referee a lot, and for me, that was a, that always was, uh, if you want to use the phrase, an Achilles heel or an Achilles body. That's what it what it is, and he doesn't like it. Factual that is as well, because the only time he's been put over is with body shots. Yeah. Better be have dropped him with a body shot, yeah. and um, I think it was the Polish guy. What's the Polish cruiserweight called? Um, was he called Gob Lackey or something no, like that? Yeah. Something like that. I think he dropped him with yeah. a body shot as well. Yeah. So Frank's and definitely correct there. And I was, I was sort of looked at that. And I looked at that before we before we made the fight with Dubois. And Dubois, Dubois definitely hurt him to the body. Irrespective of what went on, he doesn't like it to the body. That's for sure. And for me, the biggest exponent of exploiting a boxer's weakness <laughs> is the professor here. And that's what he does. He, he finds that he's... If anybody's going to exploit it, it would be Tyson. He's got, he's got the mental capacity to do that and keep doing what he has to do. And, and, and I, I know, uh, you know people have asked about predictions. And I genuinely, genuinely believe that Tyson will win this fight in an explosive style. And is that, is that because we talked about size earlier as well, is that because he's going to be so much bigger? Can you give us a bit more colour no, on I, the I, I think he is. I mean, you've only got to look at, look at both of them. He is bigger. But the other guy, he's been a heavyweight what, now for three years. Yeah. So he's grown into that. He, he's grown into it. He's carrying the weight. And obviously, you know, if you're struggling at cruiser weight, he's going to be more comfortable. But he's dealing with somebody, as Tyson said himself, he's natural. He's a naturally big guy. He's a, he's a, he's, he's like in some ways like um, like Usyk that they've got good, very good good boxing brains but I just think Tyson is he is the best heavyweight in the world there's no doubt about that and everyone's going to talk about the last fight good fighters on an off night win fights they don't see it. he's not sitting here today saying it was an off night and that's why I got beat he had an off night and he won and that's what good fighters do they come through it and he come through it and he is and he is he is, in my opinion, in my lifetime in boxing, and I, since I've been doing this, he's been the best at it. He's been involved in the best heavyweight fight I've ever seen live, which was that third fight. About, uh, yeah. And now you know, against um, Wilder. By the way, Wilder was undefeated heavyweight champion for six years. And the biggest puncher, and you're going, you look at his boxing brain, Tyson's boxing brain, that second fight worked it out, what he needed to do, and absolutely done the job. And that's what he does. He's such a, that's why he's such an intelligent, good, super good fighter. And I genuinely do believe, I believe this other fella, by the way, he's, he's not, you know, he's no, he's, he's not going to, he's not just showing up. He's, he probably stills in his heart, you may have seen a couple of flaws in Tyson's last performance. And he'll be working on that, no doubt about it, like any fighter that would do. But at the end of the day, he's in with somebody who is extra special. And I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see an explosive, 
extra special fight. Well, Tyson, we know when it comes to critics, you don't listen. It's water off a duck's back. But I want to bring in Spencer here because you're you're having to see people criticise Tyson Fury, say some outrageous stuff out there as well. Yeah. I mean, how do you take to that? It's uh, when you're personally involved with something, it's a bit upsetting, and it can get really on your nerves. And uh, but like Tyson says to me, just ignore it. It's water off a duck's back. But I mean, I watched yesterday. I watched. I don't know, 20 or 30 different people with different opinions. This fight is causing, is causing massive, ma massive different opinions with everybody. It's, um, it's going to be so, so much of a spectacular... What they've got planned for this fight is the fight. We've got a great undercard. It's, it's going to be spectacular. And, I mean, they've even brought the, uh, their own song out today, yeah. the Ring of Fire song. So if, 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 you're, if you're on the internet, have a look at it. It's unbelievable. They're pushing all the boats out for this for this fight. It will be tremendous, fantastic, stupendous. It will be unbelievable. And Turkey Al Sheikh and his team have done such a good job. And uh, they, they do really think a lot of Tyson. They love him. So, um, okay. honestly, uh, you know, the relationship he's got with Turkey Al Sheikh is second to none. You know, he was the first one through the door, and he'll probably be the last one out the door. So, you know, the... The, there's a there's a line that they want to follow, and there's, there's you know they want to get more fights to come. And uh, Tyson's mentioned them, but we go one fight at a time. Uh, I think Alexander Usyk might have um, underestimated Tyson a little bit on on that last performance. But if if you see him in the gym, his punch power, everything's gone up. He looks he looks out of this world. He really does. Fantastic shape. Um, his head's. He's very focused on this fight, which I've noticed a lot. Really focused. So we'll see on the night, and uh, we'll see who wins, and uh, we'll see what everybody's got to say. Then all the uh, all the great uh, boxers and pundits and all these people who are what I see. You know, a lot of them don't give Tyson a chance. I don't know where they're coming from on that past performance, on that last performance. But let's see. Let's see what they've got to say after. Hopefully, they get changing around then. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they're saying. You know, that's what they're all. You know, some of them are, are quite amazed. But uh, let's see afterwards. And uh, like Tyson said, it's a boxing match. The best man will win, and we'll shake hands afterwards. I think if I didn't train at all for this camp, I just come in at like 25 stone and sack maybe 15 pints of protein <laughs> beforehand. And the next day, going there. What's he going to do? Jim and jab me around? Do you know what I mean? He, listen, take nothing away with him, but he couldn't do anything without Chisora. We all saw that fight, but let's not be eluded with him. It he, he was a 50 50 fight, could have won either way. So, so like, not unless he's come on yeah. at 38, 39 year old in the last over two years, like leaps and bounds. Oh, oh, I, I thought the Joshua fight this was very close as well. I, I, I thought the Joshua fights were very close. He came out with a lot of marks and, and you know. Um, the second, uh, second fight. Second, the second fight, especially. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, and the other thing is, you sound 15 Peronis. You're on the Furiosity now. Yeah, so well, there's no alcohol in there. Uh, 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 no chance. So if I'm going in for a real ding dong, I need at least 15 pints of Peronis. <laughs> At least. Tyson, I was watching an interview with Alexander Usyk the other day and he said that Vladimir Klitschko has reached out and given him some advice. But well, that would be anti-advice. How to learn to the Gypsy King. <laughs> How can Vlad, my old pal Vlad, give anybody any advice? Because he would have used it himself only if he had any advice or any idea how to beat me. It was a, um, an absolute one-sided boxing lesson I give to old Vlad. And I believe Vlad was a, um, a very good, good champion, just like this guy is. Best of his generation. And I said, dinner, I said, if I can't beat old Vlad, I must be useless. And I'll say it again. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good, clearly. That's, that's, that's your headline. If Tyson Fury can't beat Usyk, Tyson's no good. End of. I'm not going to pull any punches. It is what it is. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good. Say I'm no good. And then I'll get a rematch of him and say I'm no good again. If I lose again. <laughs> what more is there to do? But if I beat him, I beat another man. Great, fantastic. On to the next one. But if you do beat him, you get all those belts you talked about, the eight belts, the undisputed. What will that mean? Yeah, I'll add them to the 25 I've already got, shall I? I've actually promised His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh that when I win all these belts, I give every one to him as a present. Let's get the final predictions from... Uh, I mean, look, everyone's going to pick Tyson Fury to win, but give us a bit of colour on it. Sugar Hill, how's this fight going to play out? Knock out. 
Simple. Yeah. Early? Late? Don't know. Okay. Just when it happens. Knockout. May 18th we'll find out. Uh, Spencer? Knockout. Okay. Eight. Within eight. Okay, we've got a round out of Spencer. Let's see if we'll get a round out of Frank Warren. You should ask your... I think you should ask his dad as well. Yeah. We'll bring in Big John Fury. Frank, yeah. let me just get, get it from yourself first. Knockout. Okay, you're going to give me a round line? When he catches him. <laughs> hey John, what do you think? Chess match. It's going to be a boxing match between two great technicians. Could end up a bit of a boring fight to watch. That's what they do. And I think. We've reduced the tickets now, so. <laughs> I don't get one, Frank. You've got to land that big punch. You know what I'm saying? If you're sitting with a gun and you don't need it, you're not going to get hit in the face. What I'm saying is, it'll be a great boxing match between two top technicians, and Tyson being the bigger man, I reckon I'll see him being stopped around about 10 or 11 rounds. But before that, a great, great, masterful boxing match. With both men getting tagged, both men probably getting hit. Well, what it's going to come down to is what we thrive on, and that's what's between us at the end of it. And I don't think there's no matter the master that he has down there. He'll pull it up and he'll find the win in an exciting boxing chess match fight. But there will be some thrilling moments. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. And I'm going to go to Marusek to knock me out in the first round. Fuck okay. <laughs> it. I'm going to go for it. Why not? <laughs> there you go. We've got everyone's predictions, including Tyson's very curious prediction there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do some photos down the front, and uh, we'll see you May 18th for the big one.